Hey guys, this is Emily with Snake Discovery, and today we'll be discussing one of many controversial subjects in the reptile community. We'll be going over the pros and cons of each side, and then discussing what we have found to work best with our own animals. This is one of those subjects that a lot of reptile keepers and breeders have strong opinions about, and as a result, we will be keeping an eye on the comments section below. Uh, constructive comments are more than welcome. However, if things kind of get out of hand, basically harassment will not be tolerated, so those comments will be removed, and if it gets too bad, we will have to disable comments for this video. So please remember to play nice in the comments section below. Anyway, I hope this video helps you out when it comes to taking care of your own reptiles, and enjoy! Today we'll be talking about whether it's best to feed live or frozen thawed rodents to your snakes. But first things first, this is Janet, our bull snake. We thought he was a girl at first, which is why his name is Janet. He's actually our, or my at least, first snake that I ever had. And he was abandoned in an apartment complex and not fed for a very long time. So he was really skinny when we got him, but bull snakes are like garbage disposals, so he gained his weight back really quickly. I think he's getting up there in age, but hopefully we still have many years left with him because he is uh, definitely my favorite snake with how docile he is. Let's start with feeding live to your snakes. Uh, feeding a live rodent is uh, one of the pros, more of a natural behavior for the snake, because the snake is able to stalk, strike, and wrap its prey, which is more natural than just eating an already dead mouse. But I mean, you can wiggle a dead mouse so that it does wrap it, but regardless, it's generally accepted that it's more natural behavior for the snake to eat a live rodent as opposed to frozen thawed. Many people will also state that feeding live is healthier because we all know that food will lose nutritional value over time in the freezer and having a live mouse or rat for that matter is very fresh. It doesn't get fresher than live and therefore it has all of those pr proteins and nutrients that it would otherwise start to lose in the freezer. However, is there much of a difference between the nutritional value of live versus a frozen mouse or rat? Um, that's debatable. We honestly don't think that there is much of a difference in nutritional value because if there was, we would see more health issues in snakes that are fed consistently frozen thawed rodents. Now this doesn't mean that you should hang on to frozen rodents for upwards of a couple of years before feeding them because the longer they are in the freezer, the more nutritional value they lose. So we recommend using them up within six months of acquiring them. A con to feeding live is how ethical it is for the rodents. Uh, if you're feeding live, the rodents are, you know, they're being attacked, they're being squeezed. The snakes are very efficient at killing their prey, but frozen rodents are killed in a CO2 chamber, which is a little more ethical than being attacked by a predator because they breathe in that CO2 in the chamber, they get drowsy, they fall asleep, and then they pass away in their sleep. It's kind of a peaceful way to go in comparison to being fed to a snake. Another con to feeding live prey is that snakes often, especially ball pythons, are known for this. They will get hooked on feeding on live prey, and then when you have to feed them frozen thawed, they refuse because they're not used to eating frozen thawed. So it takes a while to convert them to frozen thawed if they're already on live. He's totally like Next, there's a risk of live rodents, or any rodents really, having parasites. And you can lower this risk of parasites if you buy your rodents from a clean and professional breeder. But when rodents are frozen, the freezing process kills off most of the adult parasites, but it usually doesn't kill off eggs. So you can lower your chance of having parasites in the rodent if it's frozen, but it still doesn't eliminate it altogether. Finally, the biggest drawback to feeding live rodents to your snake is the risk factor in the rodent biting the snake. The rodent is trying to survive, of course, and when a snake grabs it and wraps around it, it's going to do whatever it can to survive because it's a prey item being attacked by a predator. We have heard many horror stories of snakes getting their eyes chewed out, getting their scales chewed through to the muscle, to the bone sometimes, and then having to be euthanized as a result. You see this problem more often when keepers will drop a live rodent in the enclosure and then just leave it unsupervised, sometimes overnight, and then that rodent will just chew on the snake overnight. Uh, it's not as big of an issue if someone is supervising that rodent while it's with the snake and is able, is able to break it up if need be, but there is still a risk of, you know, it just takes a second or two for the rodent to bite the snake. 
Although snakes are usually pretty efficient at killing their rodents and wrapping them, occasionally they'll strike and grab the back half of the rodents, leaving the head exposed to bite the snake. So the snake is busy wrapping and constricting the, only the back half of the rodent, while the keeper is hopefully there to pull the rodent back and prevent it from biting the snake until it passes away. Um, this can be a huge hassle and the keeper could get bit or the snake could still get bit too. There is no risk, however, feeding live pinkies or fuzzies to snakes. So a pro to feeding live with pinkies and fuzzies is that you can take them and you can leave them in the enclosure because they don't have, their eyes aren't open, they don't have very well developed teeth. There is no chance of them biting the snake at all. So you can leave them in the enclosure, sometimes overnight, and it'll be just fine. Whereas with frozen thawed rodents or frozen thawed pinkies and fuzzies, if you leave them in the enclosure overnight, they develop a bacteria growth on them that the live rodents wouldn't develop. Sometimes people will leave live pinkies and fuzzies in overnight because snakes are picky eaters and they prefer to just be alone with the rodent for several hours on end before they eat it. Some will eat it right away, but there's some picky snakes that need to be left for an extended period of time with the rodent. Now let's move on to feeding frozen thawed rodents to your snake. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, it's a lot safer to feed frozen thawed because there's no chance of the rodent biting the snake back since it's already dead. There's also, as previously mentioned, less of a chance of parasites since they were frozen. That freezing process kills most adult parasites. Again, freezing does not kill the eggs and it also doesn't kill necessarily funguses or bacteria or viruses. It merely slows them down. So when the rodent is thawed again, those viruses may still be uh, um, prevalent on the rodents itself. So again, buy your rodents from a clean and professional breeder who you know does take care of their rodents and they prevent disease transmission as a result. Another pro to feeding frozen thawed rodents is that it's more convenient overall. If you feed live, you typically have to run to a pet store or a reptile store that sells live feeders, pick them up, and they're typically a little more expensive than frozen thawed ones are anyway. Bring them home, attempt to feed your snake, and if they refuse to eat, then you have a pet mouse or a rat until the following week or whenever you decide to offer food again to your snake. On the other hand, with frozen thawed rodents, you can store hundreds of frozen rodents at once in like a chest freezer or behind your lasagna in your freezer, and you can just pull them out as needed to feed your snakes. Unfortunately, if your snake does not want to eat a frozen thawed rodent, this is a drawback to feeding them because that rodent is kind of wasted because it's not recommended to refreeze that rodent and thaw it out again next time to feed the snake. Some people do, we do not recommend it. It's best just to discard that rodent and thaw a new one next feeding day. The reason behind this is because when a rodent is thawed and presented to the snake, while it sits there for upwards of an hour and the snake still refuses to eat it, there's bacteria buildup inside of that rodent and you don't want that bacteria to then affect the snake if it eats it at a later date. Uh, of course, there is the debate still that we kind of discussed earlier on whether or not a frozen thawed rodent is as nutritious as a live or a fresh rodent. Uh, but again, we don't think that difference is big enough to actually affect the overall health of the snake. Another con to feeding frozen thawed rodents is that when you present it to a snake, some people will give it to them wet because it was sitting in warm water. And then that rodent may stick to the bedding of the snake's enclosure and the snake may ingest some bedding with the rodent, which can cause impaction issues down the line. You can avoid this altogether by either drying off the rodent or what we usually do is we place the rodent in a feeding tray or in their hide flipped upside down so the rodent is separated from the bedding itself. Another con or really just a risk factor with feeding frozen thawed is if the keeper thaws out that rodent incorrectly. If they put it in hot water or use the microwave, which we do not recommend, that can create hot spots in the rodent which may burn the snake internally depending on how it eats it or when it eats it after it was thawed. On the flip side, if it's not thawed completely and it's still frozen in the middle, that can also cause health concerns with the snake. To properly thaw a frozen rodent, place it in warm water, not boiling hot water because this will make the rodent pop and it just makes a huge, huge mess. So use warm water, place the mouse or rat in that until it's thawed all the way through. We usually take the rodent and we squish it with our hands at the thickest part so that we know that it has been thawed before feeding it to the snake. Now there's kind of a happy medium in between live and frozen rodents and that's what a lot of people do is feeding um, freshly killed rodents where they have a live rodent and they kill it right before feeding it to the snake. That way it's still fresh so it doesn't lose its nutritional value and it's already dead so it can't bite the snake back. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. However, in order to do this you have to have a reliable source of live rodents that you can go to, buy one, and they're usually again a little more expensive than frozen thawed. Bring it home, kill it yourself, which some people are uncomfortable with and then feed it to your snake. 
On the other side, you can breed your own rodents so that you know what goes into them and you can humanely euthanize them yourself before giving them to your snake. It's a little bit more work and you do have to pay for food and supplies and things like bedding and you have to take the time to clean up after those rodents. But that is a little cheaper in the long run. And that's actually what we're planning on doing starting next year. We currently feed all of our snakes frozen thawed rodents, mainly for the risk factor. We know that they're all going to be safe if I put a rodent in their enclosure and I can leave them alone and not have to worry about the rodent biting them. That's the main reason why we do it that way. But starting this year, we are planning on converting them over to pre-killed rodents and we're going to breed our own rodents. We'll probably start with mice and then go into rats once we get the hang of breeding mice. And the reason why we're going to be doing our own is not only is it more cost effective, but we can control the food that goes into those rodents so we know that they're healthier and they were fed a good diet. We can also make sure that they come from clean environments and from safe and disease-free environments too because when you order them online even from really reputable breeders or rodent suppliers you just never know sometimes I've heard some stories of some suppliers actually getting their rodents from other breeders and then selling them to the public so we just think it'll be safer and there'll be fewer risks involved with breeding our own we're not going to be feeding them live to our snakes though. We will be pre-killing them by using a CO2 chamber, which is again, the most ethical way to euthanize rodents for feeding snakes. By the way, bonus points, if you know what kind of snake this is, your clue is it's not a milk snake. Let me know in the comments if you know what species it is. As always, remember to continue doing your own research so you can make your own well-informed decision regarding what to feed your snakes. And if you see somebody doing one of the other methods, whether you feed live and they feed frozen thawed or vice versa, understand that there may be a specific reason why they're doing it that way. So there's no need to harass them or cyber bully them like I see all the time. Um, just understand different people do it different ways. And as long as the animals are healthy and they look good, there's nothing wrong with doing a feeding technique that's slightly different than what you do. That all being said, thank you for watching today's controversial subject video. Hopefully it helped open your eyes to both sides of this controversy and maybe helped you out in doing your own research. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time. Already on live. Okay? All right. He's totally like is he? <laughs> That's right. I wonder if you can hear blue, 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 blue. That would be really blue, 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 blue. cute, actually. Uh, eating an already dead rodent. The hell was that? I think it's Nick moving around in the bag. Yeah, it totally is. Okay. Blue, away. Bloopers. Yeah, bloopers. More bloopers. Train. Oh, train. <sighs> Let's just get it all out. Yep. Everything right now. Thank you, train. Although, we didn't really hear the train all that much in the last... We want to thank someone on Twitter. We want to thank Finn for this amazing painting of our fat-tailed geckos. This is from our fat-tailed gecko care video. He originally did a sketch that we thought was really cool, and then he came back and did this full-on painting of our geckos. So we had to print it out, and we're going to put it on a, a wall somewhere. I don't know where in the house it'll go, but it'll definitely be seen in future videos. So thanks again, Finn. This is really nice of you, and we're really excited to have this, uh, this painting of our own geckos. Just really cool. So thanks, Finn.